Hi everybody, my name is Anne. Thanks for joining me on Art on the Creek. I am so excited that you're here with me today in my studio in Parker, Colorado, because what better way to kick off World Watercolor Month than a partnership with Viviva Colors. I'm so excited to share these with you. Tomorrow's video, we're gonna go over these, the color sheets. But today I wanna to talk about these. These are the paint pans and they're so nice, you guys. These are something I really, really enjoy. Plus a plein air kit. How perfect is this? Do you guys wanna go outside and play today? I know I do. Let's go play with these and let's see what we can create right here in my own neighborhood. Are you ready? Here we go. These are the watercolor pans and the travel paint kit. So first of all, let's open this travel paint kit so we can see what we're looking at. Everything you need to paint here is so true. Um, I would add a paper towel, but other than that, everything you need here is enclosed and it's so portable. It fits in your hand. It's very, very easy. So it comes with the color sheets, a water brush, a really nice sketch pad that's an A6 size, plus a pigment liner. So let's open it up and let's see what's in here. It's vegan leather. There is no odor to it. Nothing is uh, is off gassing at all. It's just completely odorless, which is nice. And I know that's important to some of you. Nice navy color, so it's not too feminine, not too masculine. This would be a great gift for every artist or for yourself, no matter what your preference is. And you could certainly decorate this to your liking, put some stickers on it or what have you. Uh, the Viviva Colors logo is right here in silver. And then we have this handy elastic strap that holds the envelope style flap closed. The one thing that I kind of wish that they had done is add a magnetic snap on the inside of the cover, but that's just me. I'm perfectly happy to just close it up because bottom line, it closes and it stays secure. So that's really all you need. So let's open this up and see what's inside. Now the whole case itself, it absolutely fits on your lap, your desk, uh, wouldn't take up much space in front of you at all. And you don't need to bring an easel with you. You don't need to really carry a lot. You can just work directly from this because this backing here is so nice on this pad. Let me pull it out here. It's in here kind of tight. I'm gonna wiggle it out. But it's got a nice thick chipboard on the back and you can definitely get replacement pads for this but this chipboard is really nice so you've got plenty of good hard surface to work on here it's an a6 it is uh, 24 pages but you can use the front and the back so that means you've got 48 pages to work with it's 240 gsm 120 pound papers in fact it's a really nice paper it's hot press and I can see just a very fine tooth there. Both sides look the same, so you're not going to have any uh, more texture on one side than you do on the other. And this is black paper. It looks like you could definitely draw on it because it's not coated with anything. So if you have some colored pencil or some metallic watercolors, you could definitely decorate that as well. And then let's just go left to right here. The Vivita color sheets are enclosed in here. These are the original 16 colors. I really like how they package it, and this is the same way that they're packaged when you get in here. This is what's inside this box here. So let me just set these quickly aside here and we're gonna put the watercolor pan set in here, but let's take a look at this water brush. Look how nice and long it is. Okay, here's the test. Get loose, get ready. Does the cap post? It does, oh my goodness. Okay, just already, this is one of my favorite watercolor brushes for that reason alone. I Look at that, that just makes it so much better. Okay, I know I'm weird about pens, but I really, really like <laughs> having a cap that posts because that's a guarantee that I'm not gonna lose it. Oh, I love that. And um, the brush is nicely sized. It's got some good sizing in there. Let's just get it wet. And then I can look at the point with you. Oh, that's quite nice. You could get some nice detail with that, depending upon the flow of the water in the brush. So let me fill this up, dry that off. And then the way that you use a water brush is it just you just gently squeeze it and that water comes right out. There we go. So I'll cap that up for now and we will definitely, I like that, that it's a good click to cap that up. 
we'll put that in there and look at the pocket is just tapered so nicely to hold that right in there here is the liner and i am so happy i love this brand this is a zig pen and it's the one that they uh, have their collection for manga artists and it's a very nice pen it's a it's a 0.05 i will use this to make our swatch chart so let me get that set up and then we'll start swatching the watercolor pans first order of business is to activate the pans with a drop of water let's start with the turquoise blue nicely transparent well so far so good i think they're beautiful i had so much fun swatching these out and they just perform beautifully on this paper i have full confidence they'll work fine in the sketchbook that's included with the travel kit so anxious to test that these are beautiful colors it looks like summer summer in a in a palette and then of course the alizarin crimson this is a really nice one and one that I always like to see on my palette so I'm really happy to have that boy those are beautiful colors I really like the way that they swatch out before I take these out I want to see if I can mix a gray and a yellow ochre and I'm having no trouble so this is going to be a great palette we've got everything we need I am going to wipe this off and you can see because that paper is coated just a damp rag and your palette is clean in just Two shakes of a lamb's tail, as they say. All right, I think that's dry enough. I'm going to close it up here, add my swatch card in. And we'll pack this in here. That fits nicely. And I'll put my pen back in. Closing it up. And this is with the, the paint pans in. It fits just fine. So if you prefer to use paint pans over the color sheets, you'll be all set. No worries whatsoever. All right, I'm excited. Let's go get in the car. Well, here we are. I have pulled up to our neighborhood coffee shop. It is Fika. There's one in downtown Parker and their second location is just right here in our neighborhood. So it's really convenient. It looks like a little, uh, a little farmhouse. So it's really kind of quaint too. We're going to paint there outside. They've got some beautiful peony blossoms that are nicely sunlit. So that will suffice for our prompt for World Watercolor Month on this very first day of July, 2023. And I've got my Viviva Color Sheets Travel Kit. So let's go see what we can create. I'm going to save your ears. It was such a windy day that I'm just doing a voice over here because the sound of the wind was just so annoying. You can see that this travel kit is going to fit right in my pack, no problem. And the pack is pretty small. I've got pockets on the side for water. And here is Fika Coffee House. Let's go in. We'll just pass our free little library here and go under the arbor past the wishing well around the right of the building to this beautiful walkway that has the peonies. Here they are, they are so gorgeous and unfortunately their blooms are almost over but I wanted to catch them before they completely disappeared. So the first thing I like to do when I'm painting en plein air is to just kind of get up close as I can to a subject and see which one in this case, which blossom I want to paint. That's the one right there, I really like that one. So just looking over the rest of the bush to make sure that I've got the one I want and I'm pretty convinced that's the one. Here it is. I was able to take a picture when the sun came out so that we can have some nice sunlit shadows. Right away when I sat down, I was so happy that I had this neat and tidy little folio from Viviva Colors. It's just so lightweight, easy to use. It stays open. It doesn't force itself closed like a lot of things can. So right away, the setup I'm absolutely thrilled with. I do have the drawing sped up because the light was so bright outside that it was really hard to see the pencil lines. So I'm just gonna speed this part up. And um, the only thing I will tell you is that the items that I didn't have with me in my little travel kit were this pencil. So you can see that little zipper pouch I've got kind of up just off screen to the right. It's got a blue zipper on it that's where I keep my additional supplies. So I have a pencil in there, an eraser, some clips, and um, should have paper towels in there, but I somehow left them in the back of my car or something. I didn't find them when I got home. And it's one of those things. I loaded a whole new thing of paper towels, a whole new uh, Ziploc bag, and I set them somewhere. So they might be in my garage. I don't know. 
I'm kind of a space cadet. I do these things when I'm thinking of something else at the same time. I'm sure I will find my paper towels. So you know what I did? I improvised. I used my leg. I wiped the paintbrush on my leg <laughs> so that I could get off the excess water. I loved this water brush though. It was very easy to use. I like how long and slender it is. So I'm just starting out with the center of the peony and I'm going right into that bees yellow. It's very, very nice. I'm also going around the peony with that opera and right now I'm just letting these colors blend in the center because everything is just going to kind of be very loose. This is one thing I want to tell you about when you're painting plein air. Lower your expectations. Don't expect things to be perfect. Don't expect them to be absolutely as detailed as you want because you are fighting so many elements. I had uh, so many things going on around me. There were planes flying overhead. The clouds were going uh, across the sun, although right now, if you can tell, they're kind of, uh, the sun's kind of behind the clouds, but it would come out. I got very, very hot. It was uh, almost 90 degrees today, and I did not bring any shade to sit under because I thought, well, when I start, there will be clouds, so I will be fine. And I did have a hat on, and I was wearing sunscreen, but you are against the elements when you're painting on plein air, and there's a lot of things to struggle with. So using something like this, like this Viviva Travel Kit is going to take away a lot of the frustration that you might experience with plein air because the point of the matter is everything is right there for you. You don't have to keep digging into your pack to get something else. The only additional things that I had, like I said, are a pencil, uh, additional water, an eraser, and paper towels. So I really think that this kit is so all-inclusive. It's so compact. The mixing area on the palette, I thought I wouldn't like it, but you know what? I really did. It was enough area to mix. And if you've seen my paintings before, if you've watched my channel for any length of time, you will know that I'm a very exuberant painter and I like to mix big, I like to paint big, and I like to paint very free in my style. I think that that makes for a much more joyful painting with a lot of expression. And my palette reflects that. So I was kind of concerned that this little palette wouldn't quite be big enough for me, but it was. And you can see with that water brush and just going in with that opera, the alizarin crimson, I'm able to create beautiful shadows in this peony. Now the only other color that I added as it went on was a little bit of that uh, cobalt blue. Sorry, I couldn't read uh, my writing there. That's the darker blue. And it's the on the second column there uh, from the left, it's the second one to the bottom next to that uh, lavenderish purple. It's really, really a good color to mix. You know, whenever you see a paint palette like this and the colors are so bright and so vibrant, don't shy away from them because even if you don't want to use those colors straight, a lot of times they can make just beautiful mixes for you. Try making a lot of mixes that you haven't really experimented with before. See what happens if you mix that uh, a pink with a green. See what color you can get. You might end up uh, really appreciating some new nuances that you're not familiar with or hadn't even thought to use. And then once you have that information prepared for you before you go out and about, then you'll be all set and you won't have to worry about, let's see, how can I make a gray? So you've got to do a little bit of preparation with your plein air and then I think you'll just be set yourself up for success, which is so great. That's what we all want, right? Is to be successful. I'm using the alizarin now and that blue to make the mixes. I'm going back and forth between the marine blue, which is the one I think I have up here now, and the alizarin crimson or the opera and the cobalt blue. I just kind of wanted to play with different shades of purple to create those darker shadows. So our prompt today is sunlit. How can you tell when something is sunlit? Well, in my mind, the way that you can tell if something is in the sun is through the shadows that are generated. There are a lot of ways that you can show sunlight in watercolor, but for this particular painting, our peony, I wanted to demonstrate how those colors change when they are in shadow. So what I really did was, since I was struggling with the clouds here, I waited until there was a good amount of sun and then I went over to that peony and took a photo and I kind of memorized the way that it looked, the lighting of it in that photo because the photo is in my phone and I'm using my phone to film. But what I'm doing is I created some shadow on the left side of the peony, if that makes sense. I'm trying to express that the sun is coming from the right hand side. Now it's not going to be anything that's going to be 
the best thing I've ever painted. It's going to be fun. It's going to be lively and it's going to be something that I remember that I went here to Fika this day to paint this peony. And that is the way that I think everyone should look at plein air. Don't go into it thinking that you're going to paint the best thing ever because chances are you won't. What you will do though is that you will learn an awful lot of things. What I learned is that this water brush, as much as I love it, I really don't want to rely on it 100%. I love this paper. It's just fine. It's not cotton. It is a cellulose paper, but I do feel that uh, because it is a cellulose paper, I want to be able to control the water just a little bit better. Now, I can bring regular brushes to do that, and I can also remember my paper towels. <laughs> So some of that, in fact, all of that is on me. Uh, I think that this water brush is really nice. It's very easy to use. I like the amount of water that comes out of it. Um, controlling the water though is for me, the way that I paint, I don't, I don't know if it's everyone, but in fact, mention in the comments, if this is something that you are working on or that you have had challenges with, controlling the amount of water that flows out of the water brush, trying to keep your water brush dry enough, which brings another point. You don't have to fill that barrel with water. What you can do is just keep it empty and dip into a regular uh, uh, little jar of water that you've brought with you. And then you can just use it like a regular paintbrush, which I think I'm going to try next time. And I will continue to use this set all through the month of July. I'm going to use these watercolors, which I love so much. They're so portable, they're so bright, and I love that they come with a light fastness rating that's pretty good. They've got uh, absolutely permanent or moderately permanent. Those are their classifications, either three stars or two stars. And once again, I will put all of that in a link in the, or not a link, that'll be explained out, spelled out for you in the description. But the affiliate link, if you decide that this little set is something that you'd like or anything else from Viviva Colors, I do have an affiliate link there that you can click. It'll take you directly to their storefront. They sell so many things. You're going to be thrilled with their website. You can get different configurations of paints and color sheets. They have 100% cotton sketchbooks that look gorgeous. I really do want to get one of those. And they also have these folios that come in two different sizes. You can get this one, which is the A6, or you can get one that's just a little bit bigger, an A5. And when you have a folio like this, you're gonna go through that sketch pad. Well, they sell refills as well. Not only do they have refills, but they also have the bundles, which is what these travel kits are sold as. And again, they come in the A6 or the A5. Right now, those are on sale too. They sell many different configurations of the color sheets. You can get the original 16, or you can get a spring set. You can get a metallic set. Oh my gosh, you guys, metallics. And they have an autumn themed set as well. If you take a look at the sketchbooks, they're 100% cotton. They're like a hardbound book. They're beautiful. They come in either 64 or 40 page configurations and in three different sizes. And then if you look over to the refills, you can get the refill of the A5 travel paint kit sketch pad or this one, the A6, regularly $10. Right now it's only $6. The refill for the A5 is eight. So you can also get the refills for the color sheets like I was explaining earlier. They have them in a refill pack that's assorted or they have greens and blues, reds or yellows. So they have you covered. They have it all set up. You know what you can even get? If you like these paints that I'm working with here today and they really are nice. I. I can endorse these paints 100%. I think they're so great for their portability and the bonus that they have light fastness to them. I mean, that's just wonderful. You can get them in their original 16 colors or this set that I have, which is the spring set. That's the same configuration with the cork palette and that uh, folio style closure. The fact that it's so easy to use really makes me want to keep using it. And that, you know, that really is the bottom line. If you want to have something that you're going to take with you and love and use, it's got to be easy and it has to be something that goes all together. And this kit is one that I really think just hits, checks all the boxes. One thing I really noticed when I was painting with this, with the water brush and this sketch pad, Usually when I use a cellulose sketch pad, when I'm uh, en plein air and continuing to paint over and over and over something, adding more layers, the paper will start to tear a little bit. 
This one didn't. It's really decent paper, you guys. I really like it. I'm using that fun, fun chartreuse, chartreuse green here to kind of get into the background. They don't call it a chartreuse. They call it a light yellow green, but I really think it looks like chartreuse. And I'm just kind of mixing in some of that cobalt blue and trying to get different levels of green in the background. Going in with a little bit of that viridian hue now, and I'm just kind of do a real loose variegated green in the background to just try and add some leaves once I get to that pigment liner. And that pigment liner is so nice. Like I said, I've used that brand before and I really like Zig products. I think they're wonderful. And I was so excited to see that it was a Zig pigment liner when I opened up this set because it's a very high quality liner and I have them. I use them. I've bought them several times, in fact, because they are, in fact, the brand that I keep going back to when I've got one that runs out, that's the one that I like to use. I like them better than the Microns or the Stadler. I really think that they're good pens. So here I am just adding more and more of that green to the background. It's working out so well. And you know, despite the hot, hot day, it was uh, not drying everything out immediately. So I really had just a fine time doing this. And I think the peony is coming together quite nicely. I'm gonna go in after I get some of the liner on there and then we'll uh, kind of define some of those shadows a little bit more. But here you can see with the mixing area on the left there, I was really able to get in there and create some good variations of hue to just get this uh, flower to really be able to differentiate each of its petals. Now, once again, it's not uh, a botanical illustration, but I am having a whole lot of fun with it. And that's the point. I think that's the other thing you need to consider when you've got plein air on your mind. Don't consider something that is going to be just uh, textbook accurate. You need to give yourself a lot of freedom, a lot of leeway. Oftentimes you're balancing things on your lap and you can't really uh, hold things in the way that you normally would have held it in the studio. But hey, it's an adventure. Today was a whole lot of fun. I'm just making sure it's dry before I get out my pigment liner and now I'm just going to go around and add some more defined lines to just demonstrate where those petals are and I'm really liking that I can use this pigment liner here. It is a 0.5 and very easy to use. It just flows across this paper. It didn't have any issues getting tripped up on the pigment. Sometimes when you have a pigment liner and you go over watercolor with it, it'll kind of clog it and you'll have to, you know, use it on a clean sheet of paper to get it flowing again, but not this one. It worked just great. And again, that's because it's such a reputable brand. I'm just really thrilled with this one. So I'm just adding some of this outline here and I will kind of skip to the end and then you can see the final result. I was so happy that I was able to go back in after I had that pigment liner on there and redefine some of these shadows. I was able to get into those small spaces with that brush. I just think this is a beautiful set. I honestly, I'm being 100% serious here. I cannot think of enough nice things to say about this set. I am so happy with Viviva Colors for, uh, for everything that they've done to create such a beautiful set for artists to use. It was created completely with the artist in mind. And you know what? I'm really happy to share it with you guys. I hope that what you will do at the end of this video is scroll down to the description, click on that affiliate link, and just check out their website. Maybe it's something that you aren't interested right in, aren't interested in right now, but want to think about it. That's fine too. I just want you to check out their products and see what you think you might be able to use. And if not for yourself, maybe for one of your friends. So thank you so much, guys. I had so much fun sharing this with you today, and I really appreciate you hanging out with me this long. I do hope that you feel that this was time well spent and that you too will be able to take some time and get some plein air done, maybe with your own set of Viviva color sheets. Take care, everybody. We'll see you next time. Bye now.